I love the way the First Gen Lounge makes me feel. Because it creates a space where I belong. Where we're able to create community. The fact that it's a community. It's a safe place. It also gives me a place to understand different perspectives. The stories of these individuals prescribe transformational perspective. I receive encouragement, enlightenment, empowerment. And also serve as a catalyst to just keep going. Where we're able to be our true selves. I'm allowed to be an unapologetic first gen. And above all else, tell our story. And every episode is unique. I love it. I'm your host, Dr. Eve, and I'd like to welcome you to the First Gen Lounge. Oh, hey, welcome back. Welcome back. And if you are new here, I am so glad that you decided to come kick it with us tonight. I know it's been a while since I've been here by myself, but that was intentional. Really wanted to, you know, give y'all some time to just really connect with some new faces and to hear some new stories and all that fun stuff. I mean, because like, that's what it's all about, right? I think so. I think so. You think so? Cool. Good. So, you know, I'm just going to jump into it. I want to tell you a story. <laughs> tell you about something that happened to me that I've never publicly talked about um, until now, but I've been feeling so compelled to share because of just how my journey is unfolding and how things are happening. So mm, getting to it. A few years ago, when I was just starting out in business, um, I let me just even tell you, I didn't even have a plan of being an entrepreneur, didn't have a thought. I couldn't have even told you in 2016 what an entrepreneur was. That probably sounds crazy, but for real, I couldn't have told you what an entrepreneur was. And people will say, well, when you looked at businesses and you saw a bit, what did you think? I did not think about a business or somebody owning a business and none of those things. I just went into a business and whatever else. It was just kind of like that, like a, a, a mindless thing. Don't judge me too much because you probably just judge me a little bit. But anyway, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do, I knew that being a speaker was high priority for me. But I also recognized that it may take some time to really move and shake in the speaking you know, world. And I only knew one person who was a professional speaker that I could even get advice from. Well, the other part of what I was thinking is I can do speaking, I can do coaching. So being, you know, the researcher that I am, I decided to get on Google and, you know, do some searching and looking around. And I just really like dissertation coaches, life coaches, like all kind of coach, whoever would come up for different things. I was looking at all of it because what's different, what's, you know, what's the same, you know, what's good, what's nice. How do I price my points? You just, just, what do I do? Just what do I do? That's what I was thinking. So I read an article though on starting a business and how to become a speaker or something like that. But one of the things was if you know, you don't know what to do if you're interested in doing a certain thing to reach out to somebody who is in that industry or doing that thing and ask them, like get feedback. Cool, that's easy, right? And I don't mind, you know, reaching out to people and starting conversations. I'm a people person, so I'm just gonna do that. So what I did, right? I I always say, so I'm gonna work on that. What I ended up doing was reaching out to one of the people I found on the Google search. And let me also give you this as a framework. Back then, I wasn't looking at Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or none of that. I didn't even consider social media to quote unquote vet people. I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. So I went ahead and reached out to this one lady via email because I only looked at her website. And she reached back out to me and I pretty much said something to her like, hey, you know, I'm reaching out to see if I could do an interview with you. I'm interested in doing A, B, and C and wanted to see if I can get some feedback from you. So pretty much she reached back out to me. And let me even tell you this part. She was a white lady um, who clearly had created her platform, doing her thing. And she reached back out to me and she's like, yeah, she didn't have time for it, but it sounded to her like I needed a career coach. And she directed me to a black lady who since I've actually become social media acquainted with, which was the craziest thing to me. Cause I'm like, well, I don't need a career coach. I'm asking you about what you do to talk to you about it because I'm trying to learn more, you know, about what things are. But I don't, I'm sure I didn't say that back to her. I was like, you know, yeah, I was like, well, thank you for taking the time. Um, I wasn't looking for anything for free from her. You know, I could have booked a session. I would have been willing to book a session just to have, you know, some of her time and some of her feedback. But anyway, um, I told her straight up and in a series of a thread of messages that I thought that she was rude and that I didn't appreciate how she pretty much talked to me. Now I ain't said it like that, but I did tell her I thought that she was rude because how she handled the situation, the tone of the email and how she just quickly dismissed me really rubbed me in a way that I was like, yo, this is crazy. Cause she was one of the first people to even kind of like reach out. Now I can respect looking back 
that she didn't have time, but I still think that you just don't treat people any kind of way. And I appreciate now that she tried to redirect me, but all of that was one of those things that I've had even happen before. If I'm reaching out to you, um, you can't help me, but I'm reaching out to you because I've literally like looked for you to be somebody to help. And you just totally, I can't help you. I, I can't do this. I don't have time. And you just throw me in a different direction. You know, it just kind of how you do it. It really matters. That's what I'm trying to say too. Anyway. Um, and you say, well, Eve, how do you know that she was even being rude? You just mad because she just didn't have time. Well, I did ask a few people, a few trusted, you know, folks about what they thought about the, the emails, the exchange. And I see where I could have gone wrong. I just could have tabled it when she was like, she didn't have time and left it at that. But I was the kind of person like, you ain't gonna talk to me any kind of way. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that's not gonna happen. And then I really felt some kind of way that she pushed me to a black woman as though, because I was a young black woman trying to, you know, reach out to her and find some support um, just through a conversation that it was like, yeah, I ain't got time for that black person that's what I'm gonna say I had that black person I had to catch myself so later on I decided to go get on Twitter and I went to go look and finally like see her platform and she's got a pretty nice following but not does she have this nice following she's tweeting about the situation and she tweets about the situation and people like gas her up to like yeah but she's like yeah nothing nothing free for you ain't no handouts over here something lady I'm like when did I ask for a handout I just asked for you to have a conversation with me about you know business or starting a business or doing some coaching things and I don't even know how this got misconstrued but is it because I called you rude because I'm a black woman that called you rude because y'all you can look at my name and clearly tell that I have got to be something that's not white let's just put that there and so I'm thinking like yo this lady is really like going off so I in the spirit of pettiness went ahead and just liked everything that she had wrote that I realized was about me and I was like yo that just really it really really hurt me it really hurt me because here I am Again, just getting started out, trying to figure out, you know, the direction I'm going to go with even just doing coaching, how people are doing coaching, following the advice that I'm reading from, you know, this, these, these articles, these things I'm getting from online, thinking I'm doing a good thing. And here I am, boom, slapped in the face. So not only have I dealt with a lot of that, uh, I want to say pushback, but a lot of the seemingly unhelpfulness from people in higher ed settings, because while it wasn't my experience always I found it to be my experience often enough to note that I felt like people like weren't trying to ride for me or have my back or look out for me or help me to grow and develop and become the woman that I've become today but all things for a reason right but I was thinking yo this is crazy and now that I'm starting and I'm not gonna ask anybody else for any help I'm not gonna reach out to anybody else and then not knowing who to reach out to or who to ask for some of the advice I needed for what I was doing I really literally just started to take and build things and do everything on my own. So I was like, yeah, I'll just do this or I'm gonna research and find this and try this. And that led to me just really kind of going down a rabbit hole, but really having to figure it out. And even, you know, sometimes when there were people who may have had some inkling to things and I would ask, it's kind of like, well, I'm not gonna tell you, like, you know, you gotta get it yourself. And I hate that people have that mentality, but it happens. But what I didn't learn from that though, was it was important to me to be the person who was not like her and I don't know whatever happened in her life to make her you know, even respond that way or even like you know I don't see I've never been able to understand why people could be so rude and nasty um because I think there's a there I think there's a level of pro, appropriateness and humanity um and in, in just interacting with folks and again just having shared with a few people who I trust and getting their feedback to be affirmed in the fact that I could have handled some parts of it better, but my initial contact wasn't anything that was rude or disrespectful to have warranted that kind of like response. Uh, but it just really reminds me though, of how many times over the course of my life, especially somebody who's, you know, the first person in my family to go to college and graduate, that even from a perspective of having an education, people have looked at me and think, well, one, you grown, so you take care of yourself, or two, you know, you got this education, so what you need my help for? <laughs> And it's this, this really weird identity thing to kind of navigate. And then it's like, well, who do I turn to? Who do I turn to? And so in those cases, um, how often have you reached out for help or not wanted to reach out for help because of, you know, the fear, the response from the other person or because people have their agendas. And if you're not a part of their agenda, then they ain't trying to help. Uh, but kind of, again, going back to what I was saying, I've gotten to a place where I've tried to make it my deal that if I can help somebody, I'm going to do the best I can to help them. And if I can't help them, I'm going to let them know that I can't help them, but I'm not going to treat them badly. I'm not going to be rude to them um, for that reason. 
But I also recognize as an entrepreneur, especially as I have been growing and developing this platform and you know expanding my brand it's really easy to not know in some cases who's just trying to you know come at you and get at you to steal your ideas who's just trying to you know use your name and your brand for clout who's trying to do things to get close to you because now you've got something that they want so again looking back in her defense i can see that she may have processed all those things which for me i'm like you ain't got no reason to but that's not to say that she didn't or she couldn't and even the fact that she's like here i'm gonna suggest you this way to do that thing um, hindsight, she still gave me a resource, which she didn't have to do, right? But at that time, I could not appreciate that because that was pretty messed up, like, right? But I'm like, all good. And then the person she gave me a resource for, I've never heard of, like, she never heard of me. <laughs> um, I didn't see her come up in anything. And this just was, it wasn't a good um, direction to point me in for what I was trying to do. Like, could you have pointed me to a school or said, hey, I went to this school or, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I took this course, I did this thing and just kind of left it at that. That would have been even something that, in my opinion, would have been uh, feasible and something that even now I try to do with people when they reach out to me. Like, hey, I'm not able to do this at the moment, but here are some things that I would suggest you to look into. So I love the word so, 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 so back to thinking about this idea of people not helping you. What do you do? when people don't help you because this journey of life and living and adulting and entrepreneurship or student life in it whatever you're doing however you're doing it it's not something we've ever done before and while we can figure out many things on our own it helps a learning curve to be able to have a community of people who can help us navigate and figure out things as we're growing and developing so what do you do though when people don't help you what do you do when you don't even know who to ask for help or you know in what way is even best to ask for help because as someone who's got this identity of being first gen and you're navigating these very interesting waters um we have to one get of our way and think that we can do everything on our own because we're used to doing things on our own but also get away from thinking that we shouldn't ask for help or that we can't ask for help uh, because not getting the help that we need is further hindering us because I spent so much time after that experience not asking people for help or not thinking that there was something, you know, it was something for me to do to reach out to folks, even starting, you know, relationships and networking and making connections. Like, dang, you know, I, I spent years literally like not even wanting to be bothered with folks um, and in terms of like reaching out and even trying to because of how damaging that situation felt. So to you who may be, you know, going into a new job or starting a new business or just taking on any endeavor that is new and you don't know how to do it or again you don't necessarily have all the answers yourself and you know you need the help a few things I would suggest to you one is starting with the people that you know so what there's a question that you have in mind um, even if that person doesn't have the answer to even ask them if they can brainstorm with you or even refer you to someone who they think may have an answer. And then with that, at least now the connection that you are having with the person with whom you're reaching out to comes from a trusted source or at least somebody with whom that person, the other person is familiar with. And there are many cases where I've talked to even like my best friends and I'm like, hey, I'm working on this thing. What do you think? And they may have said, oh, have you thought about this? Have you checked this? Now, the last person I would think that will even have an idea of what to do with this, they've been able to help me at least come up with some options. So much so that one of my best friends connected me to a guy who's now like my brother, who is doing the same work, you know, in terms of speaking and doing stuff with purpose and, you know, doing programs and working with other companies and businesses. It was a, it was like a bag of gold just dropped into my lap. And I'm like, dang, if I had never asked, opened my mouth to ask somebody who was even close to me, you know, not knowing who's in that person's immediate network, because especially with like your best friends and people you're really close to, don't forget they have networks too. They know people too. They know things. And we sometimes only look at them for the personal things or the hanging out. Let's do this and let's do that. But the people who are around us, who are friends, who are peers, like don't sleep on them people. So her connected me to this particular person 
has really helped empower me, but also really expedite this process of being a speaker or expedite the process of being a speaker because he was so resourceful, like from sending me proposals to sending me emails and copies to showing me how to connect with people on LinkedIn to connect me with some of his people and resources blew my mind. And I'm like, yo, I've been going all this time without these things, without these connections and relationships. And here this one person comes. If I had not asked my friend for this resource or tell her what the problem was from the business thing and just ask her, hey, can you help me brainstorm? And she's like, oh, I got a classmate. So something as simple as that. So start with the people you know. They may not know it all or have it all, but that doesn't mean they don't have ideas and they can't help you think through things. Another thing is I absolutely positively don't want you to be discouraged by people who are not trying to look out for you. Don't be discouraged by people who don't know you so they're not showing you love. They don't know you. And that's something I've had to really embrace. They don't know you, so why should they be enthused about trying to help you and want to do things, right? But the thing is, like, even for people who are around you, who know you, and they're not trying to help you or show love or do things, especially when they're looking at you as a grown-ass man or woman who can take care of themselves, like, don't be discouraged by that. Because for every person who's not trying to help you, there are several people who are who have your back that you may not even know have your back. I'll give you this an example. There have been a number of times over the past few years that someone has reached out to me about a speaking engagement or about an opportunity that somebody told them about who I was like, dang, I didn't even know that they knew I was doing this. Oh, I didn't even know that they was paying that much attention. So the thing is like, it's not uncommon for people to be selfish and it's not you know unlikely that people are not trying to look out for you but it's also very likely that there are people out there who are just like gunning for you and cheering for you and speaking your name and emailing about you and tagging stuff about you who really are looking out so don't focus on the people who not trying to help who not trying to share who not trying to you know, look over your resume or who's not trying to help you navigate through an email to know if your language was good, who's not trying to help you with make that connection for, you know, a business opportunity. It's cool. Them not the people you want in your corner, no way. And, you know, when people ch- show you their true selves, when you reach out, especially when you may have helped them, you got to think about this too. Are you being as hopeful for them as you want them to be for you, right? Because it's good to put out the kind of energy that you want to come back into your life. But needless to say, it's not everybody's gonna have your back that's just kind of like any business there are millions and billions of people in this world you think they serve them all no because there's some people who just don't like them (laughs) but who they're for they're for and that's the same with you so continue to seek the support that you need and sometimes even when you ask somebody who may be a friend of a friend you know to show love or to collaborate or what have you in whatever capacity they may not you know be as helpful but that doesn't reflect badly of the friend either it was just an opportunity to make a connection to see where things would go but it may not always work out but again don't be discouraged by that because at the end of the day you're looking out for yourself as best as you can and just continue to be a good person because the people who do show up for you will show up for you in ways that will blow your mind trust me i know another thing i would share with you is it's really essential for you to find communities to be a part of where there are shared interests and being able to build your network. Um, One of the things that I've found as a first-gen college grad is that I didn't have the network, especially when graduating, that some of my peers had who have parents who are professionals or, you know, very successful entrepreneurs or have money, have wealth, have the connections. And while I was making connections and I absolutely positively give so much credit and love to many of my peers for being such kind people and looking out for me and job opportunities and such. So I had a network, right? And I had people, but it was, in my opinion, still a small one. And I don't want to say limited, but that's just what I'm feeling right now is truth. It's like, you know, only to the people that I was around who I go to school with, people who I knew who I could just reach out to and talk to, right? Um, So saying that to say find a place where you have those shared interests folks so if that's a facebook or linkedin community if that's going to events like conferences and socials where you know if y'all like to go and do underwater basket weaving club and they meet every tuesday at the library go meet with those people and build your community um because i think one of the things about the internet is it's giving us access to be able to be able be able to connect with folks and to be able to reach um, new heights of connections and even now we're in this virtual space to be able to do things use that to your advantage like absolutely use that to your advantage 
and to know that a lot of times especially for me like these days I meet people online and we become really really good friends um, as a matter of fact the guy I told you about earlier we met through email talked on LinkedIn and did not actually meet until 2020 so it is three years later we actually met but he has essentially become my brother and as somebody who not only can I talk to about business stuff and be checked in business, but I can talk to about life stuff and everything and has become like, again, one of my closest friends. And with that, it's like, dang, that's just the internet. But like the internet is a great resource, you know, when people are open to it, but again, shared communities. Right. And then, you know, if you find that you can't find the community that you're looking for, you might just have to do like I did and start your own thing. Um, start your own platform because and invite people to be a part of it because at the end of the day you know what you need you know what you're looking for and sometimes it's not enough to pull up a seat to somebody else's table sometimes you just got to build your own table and build your own chair and invite other people to build their chairs because you don't want them to just bring a chair right that sounds crazy but <laughs> you know bring invite them to come and share in the opportunity and experience with you and to build community because uh, one thing that I have said and I'm not sure if I've said it enough on this show but I have absolutely been building this platform because I realized that there was a need for other first gens, especially first generation college graduates, to have the resources, to have the people they can reach out to and talk to and network with and ask questions and not feel like they were doing anything wrong. Uh, it was about building a community where there were answers. It was about building a community where there was an understood under, uh, understanding of the shared experiences of being first gen, but not just being first gen, being first gen and out of college and trying to figure out how to navigate this thing called life. But again, when most people look at you and think because you grown, handle your grown ass business. Because that's one of the things I felt like I experienced in graduate school too. Because I was grown, though a student, you a grown student. Not like a student where there's so much, you know, for forgiveness and so much patience and so so many mentoring opportunities like grad school while I still had it was a different ballpark for me and a lot of that started for me um this identity thing of being helped and needing to be helped but not feeling like I had a community that really understood this first gen identity and looking at me and and knowing that there was still a level of mentorship and guidance that I needed for this path that I had never been on before and nobody else had been on before that I could really reach out to and really get you know that feedback about how do I do these things this way especially as a young black female I'll say that so for what it's worth though at the end of the day the thing the thing that I would really say is you are not without help it may take you a little navigating and a little figuring it out you know may to take you a little a little longer than you'd hope to get some of the things you need but that doesn't mean that you don't have the resources that you need to be successful in anything that you do and so when it comes to who's going to help you I'm going to tell you who's going to help you you are going to help yourself. You're going to help yourself by being creative, by being intentional. You're going to help yourself by knowing that you have all the resources around you that you need and absolutely all within you that you need to be able to thrive in any aspect of your life. And when it comes to who's going to help you outside of yourself, just thinking about who's around you, not being discouraged by people who ain't trying to look out for you, and absolutely putting yourself in communities where there are shared interest and in building a network so that you can continue to thrive. So I hope that this was good for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I want to let you know that I really appreciate you for being a part of this community. It means the absolute world to me. Um, thank you for showing all the love that you do, especially continuing to share this with fellow first gens um, and letting them know about what we're doing over here in the first gen lounge so that they can continue to, you know, do their thing. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please, please, please don't forget to go over to my website, www.evehudsonphd.com and join the EW family because I want to make sure you get the podcast updates and exclusive offers. You hear first announcements and resources to help you thrive in life. There's a lot of things that I share in email that I don't put on social media. So, you know, just become a part of the family. So you take care of family. All right. Well, know that I love you and I appreciate you again and, you know, look forward to you being here again next week and the week after that and the week after that. I right, take good care of yourself. Hang in there. Be encouraged always. Keep pressing forward.